Welcome to Unapologetically Sensitive, where you can learn, relate, laugh, and maybe even live a bolder, brighter life. I'm your host, Patricia Young, licensed clinical social worker. This is a weekly podcast where we explore the strengths we have because of our sensitivity and some of the challenges it poses as well. The information in this podcast is not a substitute for help from a licensed mental health professional. Hey there. This is bonus episode 13 and part of a 30-day podcasting challenge that will run through the end of November 2018. Today, I have the pleasure of talking to my other son. I have twins, Josh and Daniel, and both of them came home from college this last weekend. This is their first year away at college. They're at different colleges. I just had a delightful talk with Josh. It's interesting. The boys are very different. They have been since birth. I find that the conversations that I had with Josh are, they're more in depth only because he and I are both deep thinkers and deep feelers. So my concern is that it looks like I'm favoring, you know, one set of conversations with the boys over, you know, the other son. They both have such different things to offer and I have so much love and respect and admiration for both of the boys. In this conversation with Josh, we talk a little bit about self-disclosure and how Josh has chosen to show up in the world and how much he chooses to share with other people. He talks about his theory about why he and his brother are different as twins. I tend to disagree. I think that they were just born with very different temperaments and Because the boys were so different, I think Josh made some conscious choices about how he wanted to be in reaction to how his brother shows up in the world. And he talks about that, but he believes that this is a function of being twins, where I think that they were born with very different temperaments. And then he made a choice how he wanted to respond because of how his brother behaved. The other thing that I wanted to share that I thought was incredibly sweet, so You know, the boys have had a lot of conflict throughout the years. Josh has really needed space. And Daniel is, you know, from the time he was a baby, he was the baby that I would hand to people because he loved interacting with people. He's just effusive. He's an extrovert. He just uh, was just a very joyful, responsive baby where Josh was very quiet and very reserved. He was the baby that I would need to hold because he wasn't so sure about new people. He was often challenging for me and my mom and Josh are very similar. And so my mom has been incredibly involved in raising the boys since they were infants. She lives with us now. She actually, uh, we added on and had her move here. And when Josh was six, he told his teacher that his grandma was going to come and live in his backyard because we were getting ready to add an addition back then. But my mom always seemed to be able to really connect with Josh in a way that I really had a challenge with when he was very young. So the point is that, especially during their high school years, it got really rocky because they were very different. And Josh and Daniel just have a very different way of showing up in the world. But when they turned 18, Daniel really wanted to get a tattoo. That was something that he really wanted to do. And he wanted to get a tattoo of the symbol for twins. And my fear was that Daniel would go ahead and get the tattoo and Josh would tell him that he would do it and then Josh wouldn't end up following through. As it turns out, the two of them went together on their birthday to get these tattoos that are the symbol for twins, which just totally warms my heart because my husband and I had really questioned if the boys were really going to have a close relationship at any point and really appreciate each other. I think because Daniel... Because Daniel has such a high need to interact and get responses from people, and Josh is much more of a laid-back type of guy, the more Daniel tried, the more it pushed Josh away. And as much as Josh and I talked about this, and I really wanted to respect where Josh was coming from, I felt like he really didn't have an appreciation for what Daniel does have to offer because, you know, it's hard when somebody's coming at you all the time. It's much harder to appreciate the gifts that they have. So... This conversation in general just totally warms my heart. I hope I hope you enjoy it as much as I do. I really try to decide which episode to play first and do I play the, the best one first or the one that feels like it's got the most connection. So we'll see. So I've got two episodes with each of the boys that I will be playing in the remaining part of this 30-day challenge. Anyways, that's a lot of talking. I have a lot of words to use. 
If you live in California and you're interested in working with me, hop on over to my website, patricayounglcsw.com. And here we go for our conversation. Hey, Josh. Hello. I really want to go, hey, Joshy Washy Woo. <laughs> <laughs> Can I keep that in? Yep. <laughs> I used to have a song I sang you, but I, I promise I will spare you and I will not sing your Joshy Washy Woo song. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to ask you about, you know, you and your brother, you and your twin brother are very, mm-hmm. very different. Yeah. And Daniel tends to be pretty open and comfortable about sharing who he is and what goes on with him. Mm-hmm. Where do you see yourself kind of on the continuum as far as being open or closed, not only about your feelings, but just kind of how you live your life in general? I think I tend to kind of keep things to myself. Mm-hmm. Not because I'm trying to hide things, but I mean, that's just kind of part of who I am. And also, I think another reason is, I think the reason twins, it kind of ties into the fact, I have this, I guess, theory on why twins are so different. Mm-hmm. One twin will see the other doing something and they'll see how people do or don't like it, and they'll mm-hmm. go to the extreme opposite because they see it doesn't please people, and they'll go to the extreme opposite. Mm-hmm. I think that's why me and Daniel are so different in so many ways. Well, I definitely think with you and Daniel that you made a conscious choice. I think it, I don't know how early of an age. Do you know? Was it a conscious choice for you? Probably. I mean, like, I mean, that just, that was still, I was still molding who I am. Mm-hmm. So that's just part of who I am today. It's not like I'm making a conscious choice now. Mm-hmm. But I think once upon a time I did, and now it's just part of who I am. Not that that's good or bad, but I think that's what happened. Yeah, because I'm trying to think of how to phrase this. You and your brother are just very, very different. And, mm. and uh, you know, like an example is, is is babies, he would literally sit on you. He would crawl over you. He would pull on you. <laughs> you know, anything he could do to get your attention. And even if you chased him, that excited him. Yep. You know, he liked that attention. And you were the kid that really just wanted to sit and kind of gaze and think. Mm-hmm. Like, remember your Aunt Patty when we brought you home? She, you know, kind of called you a little wise old man because you just kind of sit and you look like you sit were... Sit and ponder. Thinking, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and so I think that was really challenging in your relationship. So when you guys were about two, we put you in separate bedrooms because our family rule has always been whoever needs the most space gets it. Mm -hmm. I don't think dad and I did a very good job of giving you as much space as you needed from Daniel. We, I just think we were too permissive and we didn't know how to do it. And for that, well, it's hard because it's your first time being parents and it's twice as hard because you have to go because you have two kids. I think I'd be interested to know if things say you had a, say we had an older brother or older sister couple years older mm-hmm. i'd be interested to know how similar or different daniel and i would be because he had some because he had a little bit of experience yeah yeah we'll never know <laughs> but i i do feel regretful that i feel like you needed more when you were younger i think the word is protecting mm-hmm. you know from your brother because he really is you know the more he can get people to react to him the happier he is even if it's at the expense of somebody else and even when you got older even if you would hurt him he still would do it because the thrill of that. Yeah, he loved that. Like, I remember him being twelve, and he'd be annoying. The can I curse? Not on this one. Okay, sorry. <laughs> I remember when we were twelve, and he'd just be annoying me to no to no end, and I'd and it'd get on my nerves, and I'd go punch him in the arm, and he'd be crying. Ten minutes later, he'd come and keep hitting at me again. Yeah. It's so. like the cat and mouse. He likes the excitement. Even if you would hurt him, he would still I, do that. I, I'd hit him in the arm and he'd start to cry and he'd still come back 10 minutes later gnawing at me, yeah. trying to get another reaction. It's just hard. I have regret that if I could go back and do it differently, I would. But I really had a hard time setting limits and keeping limits with you guys. That just was hard. I Like, I got it now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's a little late, but... Well, I will say, I obviously, growing up, we, we had a... Like, I'd say... Over the age of twelve, things started to kind of smooth out. I'd probably say up until then, we it was, it was really hard, especially for me. But I will say, I I think I turned out pretty well considering how it could have been. Um, I mean, I think I I think I'm pr- a pretty patient person. You are, and you've always been like it takes a lot before you get angry, but once you get angry. Watch out because it takes you a long time to get unangry. Yeah. Where your brother gets mad, he's ready to kiss and make up, and nobody else is because, mm-hmm. you know, we're still feeling the effects of his mm-hmm. anger. And I'm not throwing him under the bus. I'm just talking about your styles are just yeah. different. Yeah. It's like, I think it, for me, it got to a point. I'm like, again, I don't want to sound like I'm beating Daniel while he's not here, but I mean, he, he, 
growing up, he wasn't the best brother to be with. Um, like he was, he he annoyed me to no end just for the thrill of it. But I think now it taught me an extreme level of patience that I think most people didn't have to go through as a child. You're probably right. And I mean, people say like, oh, siblings are like that, but I mean, twins are, I feel like that's on a whole different planet. Yeah. Because it's, it's to no end. Like you, you can't go to your rooms and just like, they're always with you. Yeah. I do feel good that when you guys were young, we did get separate rooms for you. I think that was one of the things that we definitely get an A on. Yeah, definitely. That we didn't force you guys to be together, but it was hard to separate you and it was hard to keep Daniel away from you because he just got such a thrill out of upsetting you. And what I think I started to say, I think it may have even been in another recording is I became very aware that you at some point had made a conscious decision that like if Daniel was asking for stuff, you were not going to ask for stuff like whatever it was that Daniel did. I think you made a decision that you were going to be the opposite of that. Yeah, I mean, I'll see I'll see Daniel saying, "Oh, can I can I can I buy a $70 pair of jeans that I'm going to wear once?" And mm-hmm. and I and I'd see like kind of scratching your heads and you'd talk about it and like I knew, I knew that we didn't really have the money to do it, but Daniel would always be asking and I'm like, "I mean, I don't want to be like that. Mm-hmm. Like I don't want to I don't want to be the one draining your wallets." I mean, mm-hmm. that's just an example. Of, like like I see Daniel like uh I'll be asking people awkward questions, but like he'll always, he still does this. We'll be with our friends and we'll be bickering about something and he'll always be like, all right, what, Grayson, what do you think? And I'll put people in the middle of us and I see him do that. I'm like, I don't want to do that. So. Yeah. And in your brother's defense, you guys are just wired differently. Yeah. I mean, you're just wired differently and I, I get where you're coming from, but I also want to honor and respect that, you know, he's his own person and he he does what he does because that's how he's wired, and I get it. Yeah, we're just different. Yeah. Yeah. If you had a choice of not having a twin, would you want to? No, nah, I'd prefer having a twin. That surprises me. Really? Yeah. I mean, it makes me happy. What did Daniel say? <laughs> I didn't ask him. Oh, really? Um, tell me why. Well, I mean, like, you always have somebody to play with. Like, <laughs> you always... People always think that twins are, like... I don't know. I see. It tends to be that identical twins always have some different connection than fraternal twins. Mm-hmm. But I mean, it's not like we were best friends growing up. It's not like we talked about our feelings with each other. We definitely weren't like that. But it's just always somebody being there. And it, like in the end, we love each other. In the end, we'll, we'll have this crazy close connection that nobody can ever comprehend unless they have a twin. Yeah. So I just missing think missing out on that connection, knowing what I, it is. I. I could not have it now that I have it. That makes my heart happy because really dad and I, I think we felt sad, especially when you guys were in high school, because it felt like you were very, very different. And I felt like you especially did not appreciate your brother. What do you mean by that? I think he just bugged you and, and I just felt like you didn't really appreciate him. And this weekend you guys are both home from college. This is the first time you've both been home together, huh? Uh, At the same time? Yes. Yeah. So, you know, what dad and I notice is that you guys are getting along. You haven't been fighting. You haven't been digging on each other. It just seems like it's, I don't know, it feels like now that you guys are off at college, we finally got the parenting thing right. And we're, really, <laughs> we're a really happy, content family. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so you'd, you'd be a twin if you yeah, had a choice. definitely. Oh, that makes my heart happy. <laughs> Anything else before we go? No. All right. I just love the young man that you've become. I'm so (laughs) proud of you and so proud to be your mom. It's just such a, just makes my heart happy to see you and to be with you. (laughs) Thank you. All right. I love you, big boy. Love you too. All right. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much for being here today and for listening to the show. I'm so grateful you took the time to listen. I keep forgetting to remind everybody that at unapologeticallysensitive.com, I've got show notes for all of the major episodes, some of the bonus episodes I have show notes for. If I mention something during the podcast, then I really try and put it in the show notes. Also, at that same website, you can contact me if you have any questions or comments. We've got a Facebook group called Unapologetically Sensitive, where my hope is it will build a community where people feel supported and can show up. If you'd like to join, you're more than welcome to. Remember, sensitivity is nothing to apologize for. It's our superpower. Have a blessed day.